I'm Justin Meyer with the University of Pittsburgh and UPMC, and today I'm honored to be here with Dr. Natalie Sherry, a neuropsychologist, and Dr. Pascal Zinn, a neurosurgeon here at the University of Pittsburgh and UPMC. Dr. Zinn, could you please provide us an overview of your practice in neurosurgery and areas of expertise? I do specialize in tumors that affect eloquent areas, both in the brain and spinal cord. Dr. Zinn, you mentioned that you specialize in surgical intervention for complex brain tumors. Can you explain what, what, what you mean by complex brain tumors? I think these are really brain tumors that affect our abilities such as speaking, emotions, uh, cognition, and motor function for the most part. Dr. Zinn, if someone were to call your office, uh, schedule an appointment with you for one of these complex brain tumor surgeries, what can they expect? What are the next steps? Within probably one to two weeks, are able to see the patient in clinic. We sit down and together with the patient and their families. And then we discuss, shall we first perhaps perform a biopsy versus planning a surgery right away? If we proceed with a surgery, we will obtain functional MRIs, high-definition fiber tracking, and an immediate referral to Dr. Sherry's clinic for preoperative assessment, which is absolutely essential to creating a treatment plan for the patient. Once all that data is available, we then meet with the patient. Typically, about 10 to 14 days later, in the same clinic setting, we put all the data on the table, we show all the films and pictures, and paradigms and go over a detailed plan that we propose. Uh, when tumor, tumors are located in eloquent areas or let's say difficult territories, how do you navigate the surgery? During the surgery, Dr. Sherry tests the patients with those exact functions that we assess before surgery and we can specifically focus on those functions and preserving those functions. So that is really essential uh, to preserving function and getting the best outcomes of removing the tumors. Dr. Sherry, my understanding is you're a neuros neuropsychologist. Can you describe us your areas of, of specialty? My area of expertise in lies in evaluating cognitive functioning, so patients' thinking skills, memory, attention, language, etc. We also evaluate behavioral and emotional functioning as well. Um, and so we get a qualitative understanding of the patient's subjective experience when it comes to their mental abilities and also a quantitative assessment. So we'll do some objective testing with our patients and we integrate their subjective um, experience of cognitive difficulties with the objective testing to give us a robust understanding of a patient's cognitive and behavioral health. It's an absolutely unique approach. It goes hand in hand. The patients Formerly, we tested them preoperatively, not as extensively, I would say, like we do now. Our understanding was limited of what a patient's in-depth neuropsychological function was before surgery. And with this approach with Dr. Sherry and I, when we're testing the patients preoperatively, we have now an, a great understanding of exact in-depth function. and that that's allowing us to preserve those functions during surgery and understanding also what, by doing the surgery, we affect in those patients and in future how to preserve those functions even better. Yeah. In addition to the neuropsychological testing, we have functional MRI data and high definition fiber tracking data that is all combined and projected as one data set during the surgery. So it all complements each other. We're just starting to understand what additional very, very important functions are pertinent, like self, a sense of self, for example, and, and higher level emotions that we prior have not tested for. So complex brain tumors are really tumors that affect who we are, and, and it's of utmost importance to preserve that function while still maximizing the resection and removal of that tumor. And, and if I can kind of add to that too, I think neuropsychology offers um, to neurosurgery individualized care. So we can tailor our assessments and we can tailor our evaluation of these functions to the individual patient. Um, we know that we all have common brain structures and functions, um, but the way in which these brain structures are connected and the precise anatomical locations can vary among patients. So we can help um, the neurosurgeon map out where these cognitive functions uh, reside. So it sounds like extensive testing is done to evaluate these tumors. 
Can you elaborate on how neuropsychological testing uh, supplements in these surgeries? Yeah, so to kind of echo what Dr. Zinn mentioned, we do preoperative neuropsychological testing. So that establishes what we consider a baseline. So just getting a sense of the patient's strengths and weaknesses. Um, it also gives us a sense of how that tumor is impacting a patient's mental abilities. Um, and we tailor those assessments to where the tumor is located um, and the individual patient's daily functional activities. Um, once we have that pre-op testing, then we can use that to inform our intra-op testing. So intra-op meaning in the OR, um, in real time, mapping different brain functions. So Dr. Zinn and I are going back and forth in the OR when a patient is potentially awake during their surgery and talking about how those brain functions are being impacted. Um, and that can help him inform how to proceed with his surgical approach. And then post-op, we'll repeat the neuropsych testing again, um, and we look to just detect any sorts of change, um, as well as help our patients get back to their daily activities. So we can use that data to help render decisions about like return to work, et cetera. Can you comment on future directions of the tumor program here at UPMC? So we're really fortunate uh, that we have a very high volume of treating patients and patients seek us out, I think, for exactly this paradigm uh, we are developing and have developed to, to a very high and, and precise degree, I would say. The future is uh, essentially learning about what we're doing in much more depth. And this is what Dr. Sherry and I are in a quantitative way doing by analyzing our data, publishing that data. This will really take it to the next level in terms of integration of, of multi-neuropsychological functions and networks in the brain. Through our workings with patient, we're very involved in the whole surgical process. We learn from our patients every day. Um, and that also inspires us academically. So we come up with ideas um, that can hopefully in the future contribute to the neuroscience literature together. I think it's very important to mention that we tailor those approaches to our patients let's say somebody's uh, a musician playing the guitar, uh, we tailor those approaches during those awake surgeries. Patient uh, perhaps will play the guitar. Or if somebody's an accountant, mm -hmm. we have specific paradigms to test those functions. It's, it's really proudly that I can say uh, the collaboration between neuropsychology, Dr. Sherry, neurophysiology, which is a, a world-class team that we have, neuroanesthesia, and, and then neuro-oncology, of course, radiation oncology, um, uh, post-op, but uh, essential also intra-op is really our neuro-nursing team. They're phenomenal. Everything is ready. We always work with the same teams, scrub nurses and circulators. So very proud that we were able to build that. And I really, you know, want to thank Dr. Zinn because he's, his leadership has really cultivated a teamwork approach. Like everyone in the OR has a voice and is um, such an expert in their respective disciplines and we all work in collaboration and offer up um, our expertise and I think that's what makes the procedure go so smooth for our patients. I can really wholeheartedly say that Dr. Sherry has elevated our program tremendously and this is really going to benefit our patients and, and science and will take everything to the next level.